Hi, I'm Wayne the Boat Guy, and today we're going to be working on my outdrive because I'm a big dummy. I made a couple of big mistakes, and I'm here to tell you about them so that you don't make them too. So here's the mistakes that I made, and I make these videos because I want you to be able to learn from my mistakes. Remember, I've said before, I'm not a professional, and I'm not an experienced boater. When I bought this boat a couple months ago, the tilt trim switch did nothing. I asked the owner about it, and he said, oh, that's never done anything. That doesn't do anything. And I thought that was kind of odd because it's an inboard outboard, and it's a bigger, fancier boat than my old boat, and it had tilt and trim on it. But I'm a trusting guy. So I actually thought that maybe it didn't have tilt and trim on it. Maybe that's the way these worked. Maybe the motor was fixed. Maybe that's how an inboard outboard went. Of course, I didn't get a, uh, a survey done or an inspection because it was the summer of 2020. And as anybody knows who went to buy a boat in the summer of 2020, basically a person put a boat up for sale and it was sold within a couple of hours. There really was no opportunity to get any surveys done on any boats. So, I bought it thinking that it didn't have that. Yes, I know now, and people will put in the comments below, oh, you just have to look for this, or no boat made after such and such a year had this. I didn't know that, so this is why I'm sharing this. The boat had never been out of the water from the time I bought it. I bought it across the river, and I drove it to my marina, and we went around on this boat for a little while. I went to take it out. As I'm pulling it out, I realize this is definitely a tilt trim motor. Not only that, but the way it sits on this trailer is it sits really, really low. And the outdrive, the bottom fin of that, is about this far off the ground on a flat surface. So we had a lot of challenge bringing the boat from the ramp up to my driveway. My driveway has a couple of bumps along the way. We had a huge challenge trying to get it in the driveway. One of the things we tried to do is we tried some uh, ratchet straps. I tried to hook them on to see if I could possibly manually pull it up with ratchet straps. That didn't work. I got it up about an inch, maybe. So what we had to do is we had to lay boards down all along for the tires to go on to be able to keep it up high enough. Sometimes double layers of boards. That was a whole lot of fun. Anyway, so we got it here to my yard. I know in the winter I want to have the engine, tilt, the outdrive tilted down, obviously, but to get it put exactly where I want to have it and to be able to work on it, I need to tilt this up. Here's what I should have done. I should have taken a look in the engine compartment for the hydraulics and the motor for the tilt trim because I could have actually bypassed that and tested it while it was still in the water to make getting it out of the water a whole lot easier. So that's what we're gonna do right now. We're gonna see if, is it the hydraulics that are bad? Is it the motor? Is it the switches? Is it the relay? So the first thing we're gonna do is we're actually gonna bypass everything and hot wire the motor straight to the battery to see if it'll actually just put it up or down. <clears throat> the stupid mistakes that I made was not researching my boat before I bought it to know whether or not it has a tilt and trim. The second stupid mistake I made was actually believing the person who sold me the boat was being honest with me. I was 100% honest when I sold my boat, and it really bothers me when other people aren't. Um, it really does. I mean, literally the ad that I put for my boat when I was selling it listed everything wrong with it. My ad was four paragraphs long, and three of them were, here's what's wrong with this boat. I talked about the bad transom. I talked about all of the other problems with it, the gauges that didn't work, everything. And when people came to look at it, I showed them and I pointed out all the problems. I said, here's what's bad. Here's what you're gonna have to fix. Here's what's wrong with this. I didn't get the same treatment. And I, that, that, that bugs me. But my bad was not researching at all first. My bad was not having somebody else take a look with me who knew more about boats, but none of them were available. And my bad was also not addressing this before I got it out of the water. Now we're out of the water and I got to address it. And it's a miserable day. It has been raining cats and dogs for the last 48 hours, 
Right now it is gray, it is windy, the leaves are falling, but this is what we got to do. So hopefully we can get this sorted out. And at the very least, maybe you get an idea about some things not to do whenever you're working on your boat or dealing with boat problems. So I have some wire and we're gonna try to bypass everything electrical and just hook the motor for the outdrive uh, tilt trim straight to the battery and see how that goes. So let's see what we can do here. Oh my gosh. So if anything, one of the things that you'll learn from this video is why people like outboard motors better than inboards because inboards are a pain to work on. So in order to get to your inboard motor and the compartment where all the electronics are is we have to raise up this seat, this seat, and then under here is where the batteries are. So I'm gonna start by getting some of that stuff pulled up. This seat's nice because it goes up on a piston. This one here has some kind of assist motor, which I did not test before I bought it because I knew I could lift it up manually, but the owner said that worked as well. And it didn't. He said it was just slow. It isn't. It just literally does not work. This part here is very heavy, but it has a kickstand. All right, so we're in the engine compartment. Now, I have to try to find where some tilt trim stuff might be. And I think I have found it. This is great, I have to show you. Okay, so here we are in the engine compartment. So here's the front of my engine. The 5.7 GSI. Here's my fuel filter. It's my manifolds. Back there is my steering rack, which is something else we have to deal with in another video in the future. And Right down here is where my water, my uh, impeller is for my water pumps. And back here, here's my water tank. This runs my faucet. Back here, behind the water tank, behind the engine, around the corner, that looks like what's where my tilt trim mechanism is. Yay! <laughs> So we got a bit of work to do just to get back to where that is. I'm gonna to have to take the fresh water tank out, I think, to be able to try to get in there. And I'm probably gonna to have to take this whole cover off. But that's okay, because I wanted to take this cover off for winterizing anyway. So I guess we get started on that now. All right, well, it's a couple hours later and uh, you've probably heard before that working on an inboard outboard is pretty hard. And um, it is, uh, <laughs> I, I can attest to that. So let me tell you where I'm at right now and I'm gonna show you some footage to catch you up. I have loosened the straps back here. Um, I believe this is actually moving a little bit and I think I can get it to move up possibly. So what I did was I needed to test the actual motor for the tilt trim assembly. So it has an electric motor which runs the hydraulics for the tilt trim. And uh, my switch was making a click, but nothing else. So uh, looked up some things online and found that the best ways to try to start diagnosing it is to see if the actual motor itself works. So uh, some people say that sometimes their motor gets stuck and they have to tap it with a hammer. And some people say that the way to do it is you unplug the, the wiring harness from it and then hot wire it directly to the battery. So you're bypassing all the relays, all the switches, 
everything else in the circuit and you're literally just running a wire from the battery right to that little electric motor. So that's what I set out to do. However, in this boat, the motor for the tilt trim is all the way back here in this corner and it is very hard to get to. So what I did was I had to remove the whole back seat assembly. And my top part of my back seat is very waterlogged and it's been raining cats and dogs for the last two days. So <laughs> I took the cushions off of those uh, because I needed to redo them anyway, uh, just to lighten it up some. And it's still, it was very, very heavy and a lot of work and I couldn't do it all by myself. I had to have an assistant. So uh, my daughter's boyfriend came out and he helped me and we got the whole back seat assembly off. Uh, then I took out a couple other reinforcement pieces. Uh, I ran all the water through the cold water tank, tried to disconnect the cold water tank, but couldn't reach behind that to get that completely disconnected. But now I have it free enough that I can get back in there and I'm literally standing, squatting down by the engine, reaching back through a hole. And I can touch these wires to the electric motor and I'm making the motor work. So that's good news because that means the motor works. We don't know what was wrong with the system. It could be low on hydraulic fluid, the pump could be bad, anything else. But we know we're able to make the motor work and I'm hoping that there might be enough fluid in the system if I run the motor for a few minutes that I can tilt this up a little bit. I don't need it to come all the way up. I just want it up some so that way I can get my boat positioned where I want to in the yard and disconnect my truck from it. So let me show you what's going on inside the boat. All right, so here I am standing on the swim platform and these are the steps into the boat. Underneath the steps is where one of the batteries are. And as you can see, I have two wires, both of them red because that's all I had was a bunch of red wire attached to those terminals. And then that runs across over to where I've got to work. So this is where the whole uh, swim pad and back seat assembly was. And then there was a panel in here, which I have taken out. So down in here. Mm. Mm. <laughs> leg. There we go. Uh. So <laughs> here's here's where we're working. I'm going to tilt the camera. So here's the uh, top of the engine. And then we wander way back in here. And here's our tilt trim motor. And this is the wire that goes right to the motor itself. So what I'm going to do is I just jumper wires right to that and it runs the tilt trim. See if I can get you set up in here so you can kind of see what's going on. So I've got my wires and what I do is when I'm not, <laughs> when I'm not running and I keep my wires very separated from each other because they will spark if they're touching. And what I'm going to do is run the motor. All right, so now what I need to do is I need to see if, if that raised it up. Okay, so here we go again. If I had proper type of uh, ways to attach the wires in here, that would be really good, but I don't. So I just have to hold them against the contact points and until
All right. <laughs> I'm going to raise it up just a little bit more. So this is good news because this tells me that the motor is okay and that it's actually able to do its job. We just have to figure out which relay is bad or whatever. And as you can see, it's a tight space that you got to work in to try to do some of that. And oh my, that wire wants to wrap around things every time. Woof. Come on, baby. Give me one more pump. What I'm doing is I'm taking the wire and bend it into like a, a shape that I can kind of push up into here. Because you don't want the wires touching each other. You just want them touching these things. There we go. And we're done. Phew. Okay. So now, before I have any catastrophes, I'm going to uh, disconnect the wires from the... So what I did, I safely put the wire there, and I have the other wire up here. And now I... We'll disconnect the wires from the battery. There we go. All righty. So this was a pretty big job, but we were able to figure out that our motor does work. We are able to get the outdrive tipped up so that I can park my boat and start doing other kinds of things like winterizing. One of the nice things about taking the whole back assembly off, and this may be something I do every year, is it definitely gives me a lot more uh, room to work around the engine here. Uh, it's a very, very tight compartment. And uh, I'm still feeling my way around to find things taking that whole assembly out. Sorry, I'm out of breath because I have to contort myself to get back into there. That's where the tilt trim is, all the way back in there, way back there. So even if I have to go do those relays or whatever, that's still going to be a challenge. And I don't have my water tank out yet. I've just got it somewhat disconnected. So um, I didn't plan on taking that out. But what's nice is that if I, uh, by pulling it out, see, I can get the dirt cleaned up out of that area there and stuff. So I can can make this area look a lot nicer. Thanks for watching and uh, stay tuned because we'll be doing a lot more with this boat over the next few weeks. Wow, there's a cover underneath of there. I never saw that before. That's kind of cool. I did not know there was a cover under there.